Hello, this is RV Vagabond Jerry, and in this video, I want to give you an update about how it's going with my free hookups tour so far. It started March 8th at El Paso, Texas, and since then, I have gone to two of these free hookup locations in New Mexico and 13 locations in Texas. That's a total of 55 days. And if you've been following me, you know that the theme of the tour that I'm on now is going to all of the towns that have free RV hookups so that for the spring and summer, staying in RV hookups almost every night and never paying for it. Because all of these locations where I've been staying are public city-owned RV parks, mostly at their city parks, and they allow people to use them for free. So I want to tell you what my experience has been with these places so far. Now, one of the big worries I've had all along is getting to one of these locations and have all of the spaces taken. Because a lot of them will have anywhere from as few as three up to maybe 15 or so spaces and a lot of them it's more like three to six so i've always had this worry about getting to one of these parks and seeing them all full not being able to get a space today so i would either have to hang around for a day or two until somebody leaves or just pass on through town and not stay there but the good news is that has never once happened to me on this trip I have always been able to get a space and in fact with a few of the places that I've stayed where there were several spaces for hookups I would stay there three days and I would be the only RV there the entire time, never seeing anyone else pull in. Now, a good reason for that, I think, is probably because it's just not summer travel season yet. It's still in the middle of the spring, and not a lot of people are really traveling this early in the year. So, when summer gets here, I would expect that it would be much, much more likely to pull into one of these places and find that there are no spaces available. And none of them take reservations. So you just have to pull in and hope. <laughs> now you might think because they're free, there's some downside to it. That there's a reason why they're free. Well, no, not really. Nearly all of these free hookup parks are part of a city park. It's simply that these towns have a city park and they just installed some simple hookups for RVs to use for a few days and they all have stay limits, mostly three days. So in addition to being able to get the hookups, right next door to you is a city park with all sorts of sports and recreation equipment. Some even have a public swimming pool. This early in the year though, <laughs> the pools are not open, but during the summer, that would be marvelous. And they're all really nice looking places. It's not like they're way out into the boondocks or near a city dump or something. They're all really nice places and really nice city parks. Now, by the way, I have spent several nights at Walmarts along the way. When there is a Walmart in between one RV park and the next RV park I'm going to, I'll stop at that Walmart and do my shopping. I always need to get some kind of groceries at least and then just stay there in the Walmart parking lot for the night. And when I do that, I will typically leave the RV park around noon, go to a restaurant to have lunch somewhere in town, 
and then go to the Walmart and do my shopping at Walmart in the afternoon and by that time I'm back to my motorhome and put all my groceries and things away it's late afternoon why not just stay there for the night and then early the next morning go to my next location to get my hookups and I will typically arrive at one of these free hookup parks around mid-morning I like to get there early for two reasons one is that the earlier you get there the better chance that you're gonna get a space and number two the earlier you get there the more you can enjoy that whole first day there enjoying those free hookups now I found that I like staying at these small RV parks that are part of a city park or some place the city has designated for it as opposed to going to a large private RV park for one thing when you pull into an RV park a private park first you go into the office and you give them all of your information you give them your credit card they give you a map they point out this and this and this and then you follow a golf cart to where they lead you to your space and the check-in process to me is just a big hassle but in these small free RV parks you pull in you find a space that's vacant, you hook up, you turn your TV on, and you're done. <laughs> it is so quick and easy. Nobody to talk to. There's nobody to check in with. Nobody knows when you got here or when you're leaving. It's all on your own. And the state limits, which like I said they all have, is kind of on the honor system. I've been to a few where I see an RV there when I first pull in. I stay there the full three days they're allowed. And then I leave and that RV is still there. So I wonder if a lot of people are really fudging these state limit rules. And the other reason why I like these small self-service RV parks is because they provide just a very basic services that I need. Most of the time electricity is the only thing I care about. That's the first thing I do is hook up my electricity and they will have a water hookup as well and a sewer hookup or a sewer dump station but I only need to use the water hookup and the sewer hookup maybe once every two to three weeks my tanks are big enough to hold out for at least two weeks if I really can serve I can go easily three weeks so the large majority of the time the electric hookup is all I care about now in private RV parks especially the bigger ones they will have a long list of all these amenities they have they've got a swimming pool and other recreation equipment that I really don't care about they've got a laundromat which I don't like now I like to do my laundry in laundromats in town because I can pull up my motorhome close to the door the laundromats that RV parks have you usually have to walk a long way halfway through the park to get to it so I don't even use those so these big private RV parks they have a long list of amenities which I don't care about at all I just want to get that doggone electric hookup the large majority of the time so I much prefer the small little RV parks at city parks or places where the city operates them because not only you don't have to go through the check-in hassle but also I'm not paying for a lot of amenities that I'm not going to use. Now even if these free RV park spaces charged say $15, I would be okay with that. I would much rather pay $15 and get just very basic hookups than pay $30, $40, $50 
to a large private RV park with a bunch of amenities that I don't want. So overall, I have been very happy with the RV parks that I've been staying in. They've all been at least as good as I was expecting. And I really, really, really wish that there were many, many more cities that would install these hookups at their city parks or other city facilities they might have. Even if they charged for it, that would be fine. For $15, I would really feel like I'm getting just what I pay for and not having to pay for a lot of things I don't want. So I'm really enjoying this tour so far. And the reason why I'm doing this update video now is because I have just left Texas and have moved into Oklahoma. Going to spend a couple weeks here in Oklahoma and then moving up to Kansas and further north. So there are a lot more of these places I've already marked out to go to between here and Montana. From Montana, I move over to North Dakota and then start coming on down south. Because, as I've mentioned in my very first video in this series, nearly all of these free hookup parks are in the central states. So I'm just going from Texas to Montana and then back down to Texas because that's where they all are. And I expect that's going to take me through most of the summer. So I hope you've enjoyed watching these videos as much as I've enjoyed making them. I think it's been a very interesting and very unusual type of RV adventure to do for me. And I think, as far as I know, no other RVer has done this type of RV tour. And by the way, if you know of any other locations that have either these free RV park hookups or charge less than $20 a day, please let me know in the comments and I will add those to my list and maybe even have a chance to get to. And I certainly hope that what I'm doing in all these videos will help you in your future travels. Good day, folks.